Okay, hello everyone to the Global Watch prayer room. Today is Thursday, June 8, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. So far so good. And uh, <laughs> um, normally this is um, the day for the Tech Watch, which is hosted by Suzy, and, um, but I'm covering for Suzy today. And we have a guest, which I will introduce later, but I'm going to start us off with worship, okay? All right. And I usually tell people. Yeah, hello, we do thank you. We thank you for worship, Father. We do praise you that even for the gift of worship, we praise you, Lord, that you made worship available for us, um, a way to connect with you and um, and just express our love for you. Uh, Father, I ask for your blessings on this hour. Help us uh, gain understanding um, um, uh, around tech and even how to pray for tech. I ask for your blessings on David that he will convey the message that's on his heart um, and we would hear him. Thank you, Lord. In, um, in Jesus' name we pray. So, yeah, welcome to the Tech Watch. I am covering for Susie today. And uh, Susie has a guest, David Goki. Uh, let me give a little bit of an introduction. Uh, David is the visionary behind Go Technology Solutions. Serving as the CEO and founder, his primary focus is empowering Christian project managers to create additional income or leave their nine to five completely. Previously, David worked at Microsoft for five years um, at Microsoft in data science and engineering product management, working in business analytics and data analysis. David holds a bachelor's in business administrations from the University of Washington. Welcome, David. Um, I'm gonna just give you the mic. Thank you so much. What a wonderful, warm welcome. I always forget about all those biography things. And we have a small audience today, so I would love to make this highly interactive. I am an engaging person. You know, when we're in technology, we we we, we still love people, right? And so maybe I'll share a little bit about my testimony. Um, you can all hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, that's great. I see Ruth, I see Jada, I see Eva and Stefan in Germany. Hannah in Canada and Jerusalem. That's so great. I love the global nature of this community. So I got connected here just to give you some context. I spoke at a conference called missional.ai and missional AI conference. Really the focus there was to bring data collaborators together for those who love the Lord Jesus with their whole heart. And they want to advance biblical translation and data collaboration for the kingdom of God. And the speakers had um, this prayer watch and pray for tech, the combination of countless prayer intercessors praying over our speaker session in the entire conference. And I really feel like I saw a, a move of God and Susie was one of the people who who prayed and shared that prayer with so many of us. It was so encouraging. And so she asked me if I would share a little bit more about primarily myself today and the technology industry, just maybe to tell you kind of uh, in that in industry and technology perspective of really where are we in a world of, of AI and are, how close do we feel like maybe we are from, you know, the end times coming. I mean, I see this happening every day in my in my world. And also maybe to share my personal testimony, maybe it would encourage you and some scripture. Yeah, I think that would be really in, incredible. And I would love to encourage this small group and anyone who watches this recording later, because I think it'll be really encouraging. And then also how we as Christians of all ages, all demographics and across the world can be forefront to be the forefront leaders. We can really be that light on the lampstand for technologists all over the world and equip you as intercessors to, to be able to pray specifically into the technology world. So that is 
my thought process, I wanted to pause for a little bit and just create some space for you all to give me some feedback and let me know if that sounds like something that would be of value to you, if that would be encouraging, if there's anything else from a format perspective that would be helpful. I have lots of things I could talk about, as you can imagine. I'm seeing well, some David, head nods. David, I'd like to share. You, I think um, the question I have, where do I go to know that I am giving verified information about AI and I'm not somebody out there trying to spook somebody or lie about something? How? Where do I go to find truth about what's going on with AI? Yeah. That's a great question. Where do I go to find truth about AI? Well, I'll say this. My source of truth, Bob, is, is this book. Okay. It's the Bible. That's first and foremost. I actually have a slide on artificial intelligence, human intelligence, and divine intelligence, which was my main topic. Um, we know that the scripture tells us that there will be false teachers. Okay. And I believe that even technology can be a false teacher, okay? So you asked a very uh, specific question. I appreciate the question. I will definitely include that into my talk. Um, what other thoughts do folks have just before I really get started and dive in about my own personal story and how I came to know Christ? Okay, no other questions. All right, great. Well, what I'm gonna do is share screen because I do have a little something that would be helpful always good to have a helpful visual. Okay, so this is the mission that I shared with the audience at the missional.ai conference. And it essentially is something that I believe is our all, all of our calling. It's that God has called me to bring the salt and light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the dark corners of technology, with the power of the Holy Spirit every day. So maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about my background and my experience in tech. So it started when I was a little kid, okay? I was, maybe maybe to some of you, I'm, I'm still, I'm a little kid. And, and I love that we all have a youthful energy about us. Um, but specifically it was when I was 13. And I really felt the Lord speaking into my life to learn technology, learn the internet, learn websites and graphic design. And he enabled me to build a website in seventh grade for a science project at school that ended up winning some awards. And I was going to church at the time as a young kid. I grew up in the faith, My both of my parents you know, wanted to raise us kids in a Bible-believing school, Bible-believing church. And that opened up the opportunity for me to build websites for missionaries. And missionaries would always wonder, well, how do I, <laughs> how do I pay this little kid? I mean, is this child labor? You know, I just want to share my testimonial videos. Maybe you remember those slides in church that would just click and, you know, you'd see the picture and you'd a little, see a little flash and see another picture. And I just remember being able to share video and photographs with the world and evangelize for Christ was an early young passion of mine. And then I started my own business as a young kid and eventually ended up moving to Washington state, which is the state where Amazon is headquartered, Microsoft headquartered, uh, Google, Facebook, every single large technology company has a presence here. And Bob, let me tell you this, you can feel the evil, all right? The Bible says that the lion, the enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeping, seeking whom he can devour. And I'm telling you what, you know, in one of my men's Bible studies, we joked, we said, um, you know, don't lust after anyone in Seattle because you might not know if that's your wife. You might not know even know if she's female. And I'm telling you what, the distortion of truth, the distortion of the lies, what can we believe anymore, Bob? Can we believe what we read? Can we believe what we watch on, on, on media, on television? Can we believe what we read in even certified newspapers, right? Social media, 
right? And so I believe that the one truth is the biblical truth. And I believe that each of us on this call believe that is too. You know, there's a scripture in, in Timothy, it says, um, all word is inspired by the holy word of God. And so that's, you know, first of all, we, as Christians, we believe as, as, uh, as not just Christians, but as saints, as people who believe in Christ, you know, we, we know that this Bible is the word of God. It's truth. And that's, that's the way we encourage others is the way we apply this to our life. And so at the missional conference, I shared primarily on this concept that I'm sharing on my screen right now, that divine intelligence is the greatest, okay? But it's also greater than human intelligence and machine intelligence, right? So when I say human intelligence, I mean the God-given brain, right? We're created in God's image. And also machine intelligence. This is artificial intelligence. This is the computers. And there are many people that will debate this pecking order, Bob. Hannah, I see you taking notes. Like, okay, well, will artificial intelligence ever replace humans? Ruth, I see you looking and staring, really studying this. You know, even St uh, Stefan, you know, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will always reign forever, okay? And that our time on this earth is but a speck of dust. It's a, it's a mist. It's like a... It's like a thousand days on the or a thousand years in our world is like one day in his kingdom. So we know that the, the divine, the God, Jesus Christ, who is God and the Holy Spirit, the divine Trinity, is greater than we will ever be. Why? Because we're made in his image. Okay, this is, I'm just going into some of my theological roots. And then why is AI, Bob, why is machine intelligence always going to be less than humans? because we created it, okay? Humans created an artificial intelligence. Now, are there certain tasks? And I, when I mean humans, I mean all of humans. Let's say the aggregate of all humans is all, will always be more intelligent, more empathetic, more understanding, more connected with God. I mean, we can answer the question, why do I exist and where am I going when I die? Whereas even today, AI may have some limitations in that, even chat GPT, right? These have limitations. Sure, computers, technology, they can automate things. They can make things more efficient. Of course, you know, it can copy and paste the entire internet and paste it back to me in, in the Google search. We, we, we might Google search a long time ago, <laughs> right? And to a degree, Google search answered a lot of questions that AI answers you know, that people have about AI today. Oh, well, what, what if people ask the AI or they ask ChatGPT to do evil things? There's always going to be evil in the world. Okay. We're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. So there's a scriptural reference, of course, for all these questions, right? And so that's why Christ will always be greater than us. We know that divinely, but ultimately we can say categorically, and the studies now do show that from a Christian worldview, from a biblical worldview, when I look at the world with a Christ-centered focus, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that the machines, anything that's man-made, the drugs, right, the, the plastic surgery, all the different fake things out there will always be less than human intelligence. And so when I ask the question, well, what's the answer to ethics? What's the answer in technology when I want to include ethics and moral decisions? there's this famous ethical philosophical dilemma. It's called the trolley dilemma. Okay, the trolley dilemma is nothing but a train is going down a track and it needs to split into two. These are the questions that we ask ourselves. okay? So the train is going down the track. It's gonna split into two. On one side, you have one person and on the other side, you have five. Now, they're standing in the track. Someone's gonna die. Which way do you, do you go? Do you go left or do you go right? Well, maybe we would say we go to the one because, you know, it's less people, it's less than five. Okay. And then maybe five, you save the five lives. Well, what if, what if the, it's, it's five liberals <laughs> or what if it's five uh, murderers? 
Okay, what if it's five rapists? What if it's five elderly people who are sick and dying and it's one baby? Well, still, you ask the AI this moral dilemma, it's very difficult to answer this type of question, right? As a miracle believer, as someone who knows that there's miracles that happen yesterday and today and tomorrow, I've seen them with my own eyes. We have the resurrection power of Christ, it says Romans 8, 11, right? We have that same resurrection power in us. Come on. We know that we could just say, God, destroy that train immediately. And if I believe in my heart that that mountain is cast into the sea and believe with my whole heart, so will it be. God's done it before. God's miraculously stopped trains. He stopped bombs. He stopped weapons. I mean, he could do it, right? So, but the AI, the machines don't think, oh, well, is there actually a divine being that has the power to do this? Why? Because most technology is built by people who do not have a relationship with a divine entity, let alone Christ. They don't even have a faith relationship. Let's back away from Christ in the Bible. Let's just say, do people believe Jesus even existed? Okay. Lena, you live in Jerusalem. You look every day. You look outside your, your window. You probably see some historical artifact. In Germany, you have a lot more ancient architecture than us baby Americans. And <laughs> we've only been around for 300 years. And we stole this land, right? Historically speaking. So when I think about, okay. So now we know that Jesus existed as a human that walked this planet. Okay, this is historical proof. Okay, people will say, oh, well, how do you know? I wasn't there. You weren't there. Okay, well, how do we pass on truth, Bob? You asked this question about truth. Before we had cameras, before we had voice recorders, before the government was watching, right? Before we had all this technology that's used for good and bad, hey, witness account. You go before a judge, do you swear? on the Bible, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I saw, I saw, I saw some 500 people saw Jesus after he resurrected. Okay, so that is how we pass on truth from a society point of view, right? Um, so this leads me to ask the question about ethics, which is to say, okay, so what is the qu answer to ethics in technology. And categorically, I can say that here is the solution. Okay. It's Christ-centered people with a biblical-based worldview building the tech. Okay. So Great Commission says go and, and baptize them in the name of, of Jesus. Right. And how can they believe if they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? So we need to raise up more evangelists to go spread the word of Christ. Okay. Every faith, every religion needs a way to continue to carry on its fundamental truths. And as a believer in Christ, we need to share the good news, right? Which is, I believe in God. God created the universe. You can have a personal relationship with this entity. And I believe that if you don't know who God is, but you can't understand God, pray. Let's bring this back to this group, this community. I was wearing, I'll tell you a small little story. I was in the grocery store the other day. Okay, uh, grocery store, we call it here. Maybe it's the market. Maybe it's the, um, yeah, maybe it's uh, the food store, <laughs> depending on where you're from. And I had the sweatshirt with the praying hands on the back, kind of like this, right? And I behind me, I had this Indian lady. I believe she may have been Hindu. She was not Christian. She said, excuse me, sir. Uh, I really like your sweatshirt. Prayer is important to me. So in that moment, I felt God saying to me, we as a human creation, he created us to be curious. He created us to be, to, to, to wonder, to think. and." He created us to have relationship with him, right? Even if people don't know that that God is Jesus, the Messiah, they still, even faiths have this desire to pray. You know, the Islams, they pray, uh, the Muslims, they pray five times a day facing East, the religious ones do, right? 
So we know that prayer is important. So whenever someone comes to me and says, hey, David, who is God? I say, I know who God is for me. If you don't know who God is, I request that you pray to God and ask God to reveal themselves to you. And in that journey, you will find a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. Now, you may disagree with me. You may agree with me. But this is a way to be inclusive and not to offend people in my eventual evangelistical journey. Of course, we can be bold. And Paul and the disciples, they were all crucified. Even Paul was hung upside down, right? Uh, not Paul, Peter. Peter was the one who's like, I'll never deny you. Two minutes later, I don't know who Jesus, who's that? <laughs> oh, but since I denied Jesus, I feel guilty and shameful. And so I'm going to not only be crucified, but be crucified upside down. I feel like there's a little bit of a Peter in all of us, right? On Peter, will I build my church on the rock, right? And of course, Jesus is the ultimate cornerstone. So yeah, my talk at Missional, which was really this beautiful intersection of technology and data and faith and Bible translators was to say, yeah, be bold in your faith in every area as a technologist, be bold in your technology and build your biblical, ethical, moral principles and worldview into your technology right? So who here just by show of hands has heard of chat GPT? Raise your hands. Okay. Hannah is first. Okay. Ruth, Lena. Okay. Bob, did you give me a little nod? Yeah. Yeah. He's smiling. Okay. That's great. Um, so when ChatGPT first came out, like version one, there was another company called Jasper, and it's basically a large language model, an LLM. And there, you know, maybe about a month and a half ago, there was this question that people were asking GPT. It was like, hey, tell me a funny joke about Jesus. Um, tell me a funny joke about Allah. Tell me a funny joke about Buddha, right? Tell me a funny joke. And for Allah and for Buddha, it said as an AI model, telling you a joke about a highly held religious belief with over a billion followers would be offensive and inappropriate. So I cannot answer your question. When the question was asked, tell me about joke about Jesus, that said something about Jesus, you know, yeah, why does Jesus always win at golf? Because he has a hold in one, is what the answer said, which wasn't really, you know, literally funny. It wasn't from a literary perspective. It wasn't humorous because it didn't make sense, but also was sacrilegious to a degree. So you can see how a question like this is biased in the sense that it's biased towards against Christians, actually. And so, of course, it got posted by conservative Christians all over the world this, you told us this wasn't biased. It's biased. What are you going to do? I even posted on LinkedIn. Lots of views, lots of comments. How dare you? You know, all this. And a couple of weeks later, guess what? You type in the same joke. I'm sorry, Jesus was a historically religious and faith-based figure with, you know, many followers, and it would be inappropriate and sacrilegious for me to tell a joke about a religious and faith leader. Okay. Okay, a little progress. Okay, tell me more about this Jesus character <laughs> while you're at it. And of course, I could give a demo of GPT and and if 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 the audience wants to do that, we certainly can. Um, but I really felt like, all right, so get into the key point of how do I pray for technologists better? Okay, so in my walk with Christ, and it's really been a beautiful rededication of my life in the past three years. Um, I had this one slide here, which is just a little bit about me. I was in the office the other day on a whiteboard and you can't really read this too well unless you have a big screen. Basically on the left, it's before I found Christ and after. And, you know, that was with my team and I was saying, you know what? Um, and we're a faith forward company. We're remote first. And I said, there's really three key things. I got married in a global pandemic. 
I started a business in a recession. My mother went to heaven and we broke our revenue records two months later. And when a member of my team was like, David, wow, <laughs> do you realize what you just said? I was like, no, what did I say? They're like, oh yeah, you're going to be telling your grandkids these stories someday. Maybe some of you can relate about telling stories. And uh, we're all going to be able to tell stories. We're all going to be able to tell about how we had struggles and suffering and how you know, our relationship with Christ was such an important part of who we are. So back to prayer, how do we pray? How do we pray better for technologists? We pray, one, that technologists would be Christ-centered people, okay? That they love Jesus with a passion and a desire, and that um, his thoughts become higher than our thoughts, okay? That the pressure to conform to this world, Romans 12, 2, we're not conformed of this world, all my Bible, by the way, maybe some of you will love this. I learned, uh, my, my parents taught me in the King James version. So as a young kid, I was a five-year-old kid walking around saying, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt honor thy parents. <laughs> kind of funny. But in, in, in Romans 12 too, it says, don't be conformed to this world, right? In the message, which is the paraphrase, right? It says, you know, don't succumb. Don't give in to the cultural trends of this world right so if if god created remember here's we we have to we have to all agree that this diagram makes sense which as faith believers we do so technologists need to understand that this is true and once it is then we know that god created us and we created the ai okay and we created the ai to create more ai there's some little bit of inception there so we pray for god to come soon. Okay. I can't wait for Jesus to come back. Um, if you've lost a parent or a loved one, you know that they're in heaven. And we know that a lot of people die and don't go to heaven, right? That's the loss. But I can't wait for perfect peace in heaven, number one. So we just pray for heaven to come on earth. That's the Lord's prayer, right? Number two, human intelligence, that now the faith based perspective from the Bible, right, would seep into my mind that I'm actually renewed in Romans 12 to right, which is my life verse renewed by the transformation of the living word, right? The Rema word, the Greek is the Rema word, the, the word that just pops off the page and it's just so intimate, so deep. And so that is a prayer that, that more technologists would have not just a relationship with God, not just attend a gathering of community in, in, instead of a brand or a building. Now, there's nothing against that, but that they would have a true relationship with Christ. And that finally, they would integrate that Bible-based worldview, right? When I say worldview, I look at the world through the lens of the Bible, right? And I say, the Bible says this, this is how I'm supposed to live. It's a guide guidebook for life. But that biblical worldview and many of these morals and values are in other religious texts, right? Little little story, because I know that you got you like my stories, but just by the facial expressions. <laughs> so in the States, we have Uber. I know they're global. We have taxis, right? So I was in a taxi, I was in Uber. I was actually in the Lyft, which is a competitor to Uber. So I was in a Lyft the other day, and we got back to my my home and this guy, he, I mean, he loved technology. He had four screens on his dash, four cell phones. Okay, I can't make this up. I think I took a picture. Okay, one picture was his map. Another picture was a Mormon text. Okay, another picture was his Lyft app that showed who he was driving around. And another picture, I cannot make this up, was a video camera facing forward, <laughs> recording the road. And he just happened to have Matthew 6.33 up in his Mormon text. Okay, so we all know Matthew 6.33. And if you don't, that's okay. It's, it's, it's seek first the kingdom of God, right? And all these things will be added to you. And so he's reading this. It says Mormon text, but I didn't know it was Mormon text. So I said, hey, I see you're reading the Bible. And he said, no, actually, I'm reading uh, the Mormon text. And I, I'm, I'm struggling with what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, kingdom, kingdom. 
it's not the British kingdom. <laughs> it's not Canada, you know, a, a, a kingdom territory. Is that what we say in Canada? No, it's the kingdom of God. It's everyone who, you know, in Matthew 19, 29 says, everyone who's left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or lands for my sake, right? Jesus talking here, Matthew talking about Jesus's account will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last first. So that principle would be a kingdom principle, right? I'm going to serve others and I'm going to be last and in the kingdom of God at first. So how do we pray for technologists better? We pray that one, they really have a deep relationship with Christ that goes beyond anything that they can get from this world. They go to their prayer closet. They have quiet time with Christ. They go to a quiet place. I mean, even Jesus, right? He went into a quiet place, sometimes even 40 days. Number two, that they would have a biblically based worldview and that those would actually, number three, be built into the technology, right? If I don't know Christ, I'm not going to believe his word to be true. And if I don't believe his word to be true, I'm not incentivized to build his kingdom in technology so as a technologist you're really this is this is what god called me to do he called me to leave microsoft now i had access to all the data every single piece of data bob it's insane microsoft is tracking everything they're taking a screenshot they're taking a picture of this meeting every 30 seconds a snapshot when email came out oh yeah they're reading all your email my brother was part of that you know that technology is cool technology when used for good but also can be used for evil um they own patents crazy patents you know related to global pandemics and i don't want to make this political but it's all there it's in the data so when you ask yourself what is true and what's not true when it comes to ai bob i have to ask myself and go to the to go to god and the holy spirit hey the ai is telling me this is this in alignment in divine alignment right divine alignment here with your word and what i know is true and if it's not true show me that give me that holy spirit prompting right and show me the truth why because the truth will set me free so yeah in conclusion, my concluding remarks would be to say technology is a very, very dark industry. Okay, going back to this, salt and light of the gospel into the dark corners of technology. You could even say the dark corners of any industry. Every industry has their dark corner. Okay, with the power of the Holy Spirit every single day. And I pray Matthew 28, 16 and 20. And that more technologists who are in technology, big tech companies would be bold in their faith, like Susie, like many others, hundreds, thousands of others, that they would rise up and be bold in their faith and brave. That was my main calling at Missional, just to say, be bold and brave in your faith. I've had multiple friends in Seattle tell me, that they have been depressed. Maybe it's the, the rain, maybe it's the clouds, uh, maybe it's the evil, maybe it's their own demons that they're battling. And, and even in some of our men's gatherings, we've seen real manifestations of demons. Like when you experience it, you can't describe it, but it's just not of God. And we've casted those demons out and God's been so good to raise up more people. We need more disciples, right? Go, he said, right? What's the, what's the model of discipleship? Jesus, Jesus always said, I'm going back to my father. I'm going to leave. You're going to be more empowered than I am to do even more. And now here we are. We don't even have the disciples. We're empowered to do more. So that in conclusion, that the customers even and technologists would be empowered to be bold and that number two i would say 
a deep conviction of mine is that more faith-based technologists would start their own organization, their own ministry, their own for-profit business, their own nonprofit, their own association, their own committee, and raise up Titus's, raise up Timothy's, right? Raise up the future generations. We know, okay, so Lena, we know that 144,000 will be raised back into Israel. Okay, I'm not Jewish. I pray that the Lord comes before the tribulation. We can debate theology all day long. Is it pre-trib rapture, post-trib rapture? What they say, uh, hope for the pre-trib rapture so that we don't face the tribulation, but prepare for the post-trib rapture so that we're prepared for seven years of terrible, evil destruction. You thought global pandemic was you know, bad. Talk about cutting off food supplies and earthquakes and tornadoes and natural disasters and disease and people laying in the street wishing to be dead, but they can't die because they're supposed to live, you know? So we know that there is an end and we have hope. I think that's, you know, a lot of people don't have hope in this day and age. So we can, we can cast out fear. All right. You don't have a power of, you don't have a spirit of fear, but you have the power of love and a sound mind. Right. We can, we can create boldness like the spirit of Daniel. Okay. Daniel 512 excellence. He can interpret dreams. We need more Daniels and technology. And we also need more Pauls that raise up Timothy's and Titus's, right? Not just Timothy's, not just a generation, but another generation. And that that generational blessing continues to be rooted. Okay. We could pray against any strongholds, generational strongholds and curses, especially in technology and healing from all trauma and all sin. I could just keep going on and on and on. Um, that is how you pray for a technologist. For female technologists, you, pr you pray that the Lord would raise up bold women in technology, bold, diverse women, strong, courageous, biological women who identify as women who know that they're a daughter of the king. Come on. How have all these kids forgotten their gender? Just look down and look at what God created. There you are, right? And for the men that God would continue to keep their minds pure, their intentions, their hearts clean like David in the Bible, right? And that strong men are raised up. David's mighty men would be raised up, right? D David had 300. Gideon had 300. 300 men. We need more mighty men. We don't want God to look at, at you know, the United States could be an example. It could be the world and say, I can't even find 50, you know, show me 50, 50 faithful men in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, God, I'll go look. Oh, hold on a second. Lord, uh, what about 40? <laughs> what about 30? What about 10 faithful men? No, we need strong men. If we're in a global recessionary period, right? If we're in a period where global inflation is, there's uncertainty, right? Uh, I was just reading a report about industry trend, you know, where, we don't know we, what macroeconomic global trends will happen, especially with the U.S. election, tra potential transition of power. We see some of these other countries where there's transitions of power that happen. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. So we are certain, though, that we know Jesus is coming back. And that is the best. That is the best certainty. That's really hope. I hope this encourages you. Um. Yeah, I'm so incredibly thankful for prayer intercessors and prayer warriors. I mentioned briefly that my mom did go to heaven and she was a prayer intercessor. Okay, she loved the Lord with her whole heart. She prayed intimately and deeply for those around her and taught me how to pray more fervently and to pray the scripture because that's the truth and to pray from a place of worship and thanksgiving so i'm just so thankful and grateful for this opportunity to share with you all i did leave 15 minutes at least for us to open in discussion and i'd love to hear your thoughts and god's given me a lot of strengths and talents and abilities and we're right at the cusp of technology we're learning new technology every week every month 
So I'm happy to answer any technical based questions. If I don't know the answers, I, I'm sure I can find someone who will know or <laughs> can ask the AI, I can, you know, do research and very resourceful. Um, I would just like to close in prayer and then open it up for questions, um, if, if you don't mind. Um, Lord, I just thank you right now for this global prayer watch team, God, that you have set the eyes and minds and spirits of this mighty, powerful community to keep watch over your earth, Lord. You're going to eventually set up your kingdom on this earth for a thousand year reign, Lord, and then every knee and tongue will confess that you're the Lord, that you are the perfect comforter, you are the counselor, you're the mighty warrior, the fighter, you're the perfect judge, you're prince of peace. I just thank you, Lord, right now. For each soul that hears the sound of my voice, Lord, that it's not my words, but it's the words you speak through me, Lord. That even now, people who watch this and listen now currently live and in the future will be encouraged, Jesus, to trust you in a time when it may be easy to lose faith. The worries of the world, the rumors, the news, the cultural trends, Jesus, that sometimes they can really pull on us. And after all, we're human. We're not God. But we know that you are. I just thank you, Lord, for Ecclesiastes 4.12, that even maybe one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a three-cord strand is not easily broken. God, I just thank you that there are a hundred cords, a thousand cords, a million cords, even, dare I say, a billion cords, Jesus, tied together, Lord, I just pray for our world. I just pray for each person that's listening today, God. Jada, Eva, Stefan, Bob, Hannah, and Lena. I just thank you for each person listening today, God, that you would revive them with a boldness to pray for technologists. That you continue to encourage them in their walk with you, Lord. Yeah, we can debate theology, we can debate belief systems, but Lord, we cannot debate the personal relationship that each of us has with you. So Lord, we glorify you, we praise you, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, we give you all of the glory. We're humbled by you, Lord, we're your servants. We love you so much, Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. God's people say amen. Um, I have yeah, anybody has questions to ask David, we could do that. Um, and then depending on if there's um, time left, we can also pray for David and any anything that he raised. Um, yeah, let's let's start with any questions. Go ahead, Ita. Um, I uh, when you was sharing when you were sharing David, I got two scriptures. I want to read them, and I can. Um, it's one is First Corinthians one nineteen, um, and it says, "For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent." And the other scripture is um, um, First Corinthians two. 16 for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ and my prayer is our father i thank you for um for all the people that you have called to tech and i pray that they will walk in absolute obedience into your guidance that they will be protected in their hearts uh, to be pure unto you and to be obedient to you and that you will guide them and um, that they will have boldness to use evil for good lord and um i pray that in the name of jesus amen thank you i received that very encouraging
Yeah, any questions or anybody has um, uh, on their how to pray for David, please go ahead. Or the, or the technology, right? Um, yeah, the prayer points that he had. Yeah, David, I think your, um, your presentation was so like foundational to what is technology and how, and, and I mean, yeah, the basic concepts of technology um, from a godly perspective and also a really clear points on how to pray, right? For, for technology and technologists. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, let me pray into it and then we'll go to Ruth and Hannah. So Father, yeah, we thank you. We thank you for David. We thank you for the voice that you have given him. I agree with you, Ted. Thank you for the boldness that you have given him. Uh, Father, I continue to pray for clarity of revelation and understanding of his place, uh, of his position, his calling. Uh, Lord, that you continue to guide him, Holy, Holy Spirit, uh, that his inner man would know exactly who he is and what he is called to do. Father, um, yeah, give him clarity and um, Lord, I I, um, I cancel out any words spoken against him, um, like judgmental judgments made against him. We cancel out Jesus in the power of your name, um, but we release him, Lord, into your purposes, that nothing would thwart uh, or even slow him down, Lord, that he would know exactly um, uh, the calling and how to walk in it. Um, yeah, and we, we we pray, Lord, for the believers in technology that uh, that there would be an um, in there uh, for those who are product managers and design software um, engineers, etc. That they would um, uh, father that they would not set aside their own beliefs, um, but they're guided by this principle of the of right or wrong according to your. Uh, uh, to your word, Lord, that the biblical perspective will be uh, the standard that they walk by. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Hannah. I have a question, David, before. I mean, I want to speak about what I was picking up when you were sharing, but the question is, when I talk to technologists, it's not so much a question of bravery or boldness. I mean, they're they're usually pretty strong people. They're, they've stayed in the industry, right? It hasn't gotten rid of them but the issue is loneliness when when they get can get honest with themselves the difficulty is they find that the church sometimes and and i think this is increasing looks at them as the enemy they're now working for the enemy and so it's a loneliness issue do you want to speak into that in any way i mean i i pray into this myself quite a bit because i'm seeing you know that these are people as you say they're called into the industry by the Lord to be salt and light. And they know that, but how do we best pray for that loneliness that comes over them? Yeah, that's a good question. So the first thing that comes to my spirit is that, um, so I heard you say a lot of developers, a lot of software engineers, a lot of techie types are opinionated and strong and bold people. Yes, about technology, maybe not so much about their faith. So I think part of it is to speak up and to, you know, you can be very overt and say in meetings like, hey, is, any, is, anyone, open, is anyone open to me praying to Jesus before this meeting, right? So that's very bold, right? You know, but there's also the language, right? To say, you know, it, it, you know are you struggling with anything or is there... Um, there's certain words you can you can use in terms of like you know how would your how was your weekend oh this weekend was such a blessing i i was able to go out on a hike with my my family and you know we got to go to church or we got to get together so yeah i think that part of it is the language too because when i'm bold with my faith in tech then other people hear that and they say oh i'm going to go pull david aside and i'm going to have a conversation and then when I was at Microsoft, I was, I, I felt led to do this. And even on my team, I found three other strong believers and we would actually get together and we would get into conference rooms and we would pray before our meeting. So we would find projects that we could work on together. So I think that's part of it is, you know, Hannah, that's why I said be bold first, but also 
pray specifically, be specific in your prayer, right? And asking for Christians to come to gather in the industry, right? And then just ask once because the Lord hears your requests. And then we, we pray, we thank the Lord that it's done. And then we go back and we really seek the result. Okay, you know, hey, Susan, did you, did you, has anyone come to you this week? Have you been praying? What have you been doing? Your faith is dead without work. So what other organizations, what other projects could be doing that would be a Christian there? Um, and then for loneliness, um, so what the global pandemic did and the, what the enemy does is it divides and it isolates. And in some countries that are not represented on this call, Philippines, Vietnam, China, many of them, it was an iron curtain. I'm talking about communist iron curtain, no market. You go, you leave your house, we're tracking you on your phone. You need to check in every day. If you leave, you're going to jail. Very, very crazy, right? So in that, the enemy was able to isolate people. And then more suicides happen, more depression, more murder, right? So we need to pray that those in technologists who say that they're alone, I don't want to be controversial here, but how can you be alone if you have a deep relationship with Christ? So that's why I'm going back to my deep centered, Christ centered people. For those who are alone in technology, or they it, maybe I also heard you say isolated in the church, they go to a church. So then we also need to pray for our leaders, our, our, our faith-based leaders and pastors to say, that their eyes would be open and that they would even see those in technology as light. Where does light shine the, the brightest? In the darkness, right? When I'm up in the mountains in the Cascades and in the Rocky Mountains of the United States um, and it's pitch black dark, you light one little light or you light one little fighter, it shines really bright. So that those who were alone would know that they're that lamp on that light stand, right? They're on that lampstand, they're gonna shine bright. And sometimes that bravery and that boldness brings persecution. I don't want to say sometimes we will be persecuted for our faith. Now, in the United States, we have freedom of religion, and in many European countries, same too, Canada, right? Many countries in the world do not have this. So your faith will really be tested. If I have something here and say, Do you believe in Jesus? I'm being big and bold because that's who I am. Yes, yes, Lord. I'll do it for my wife. I do it for my kids. I do it for you. I can say that. And I'm like looking straight ahead, just like I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I'm looking to the camera. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. So those who will say they're alone in industry, that God would just raise up a single person in this season of loneliness, whether it's a spouse, a coworker, a friend, a potential date mate, you know, someone to do life with. So a lot, a lot of young guys in Seattle are, they're in technology and they're alone and they're coding every day and it's miserable for them, right? There's a study that came out of um, or, uh, some people who were in Kenya. There was a Kenyan team. Without getting too vulgar, I'll spare the details. They were responsible for tagging the bad, evil data in chat GPT. You go read about this. Okay. You know, someone says, hey, how do I build, you know, a weapon? Or, you know, how do I commit this evil act? I don't want to give, I don't want to name them because I don't want to name the demons, but it's there. This Kenya team had to go in and say, nope, we need to censor that. We need to censor that. We need to censor that. So there is always, when there is good, there's always if evil force trying to attack that good. So yeah, for people who are alone, just that one that they're never alone with Christ. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hebrews, right? Peter. So number one, and then just that God would really encourage them either with someone digitally, like this organization or in person, ideally, and that they would really feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit with another, with at least one more believer. Does that, does that help answer your question, Hannah? Yeah, it does. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. 
Okay, we are on top of the hour, but um, Hannah, do you think you can give a quick response to what you were assessing for David? And then we'll we'll go to Bob and maybe Bobby can do a quick close for us. And I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I just really want to bless you, David, because I'm, I'm hearing something in you I don't hear often on this call, and that is the lamp of knowledge. I mean, we often talk about creatives. We talk about them pulling on the revelatory aspect of the Holy Spirit, but he's been showing me recently he wants the full menorah, the lamp stand filled. So you're pulling on the knowledge lamp and exalting him as, you know, when you did that thing about divine knowledge first, then human, then machines, I went, whoa, Abba, you've got someone here in the industry who's a strong believer who is lifting up that lamp and so father i just pray over david that you will continue to open the door where he can share this teaching this understanding that you've given him he carries it well and he shares it so dramatically father you've you've made him a strong believer who understands that it's more than head knowledge now we're talking about experiential knowledge with you and so he's built his platform on you can do well in this industry and you can be creative in this industry and make it salt and light when you have an experiential knowledge with the living God. So Father, I just loose that even more over David that you will call him into arenas where he can speak this into the church and he can speak it into young people who are deciding whether or not they should follow this call and go into the technology world uh, as their career and their calling. So loose that over him, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Bob. David, would it be possible to get your connecting information to like an email or something so we might stay in touch with you? Absolutely. So I didn't share this slide, but I'm happy to do so. I have a QR code. Let's see if this will work. There you go. <laughs> That's my LinkedIn. Uh, my email address is, uh, I will put this in the chat. It's david at gotech.ai. Oh my gosh, there's so many questions in the chat. I, I miss so many. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Bible right. translation. David, I don't think. Yeah, Ruth had to leave. That's it. There's no, no, no question. Okay. Great. All right, everyone. Um, thank you, David, again. Thank you for, yeah, very informative and great prayer points. And, um, Thank you everyone for joining. And we typically say goodbye and bless our speaker as we go. So um, bless you, David, everybody unmute. And we need to get you back, David. We need a part two. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to have you back. <laughs> Blessings on you. Blessings on you. Yeah, it was so good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Blessings. Blessings. Your blessings. Thanks, David. Blessings.